recognize the gentleman from Wisconsin, Mr. Tiffany. Judge Samaniego, um, you said in one of your answers earlier that um, people come here because they're passionate and you've advocated for allowing people to come in here. Um, do you think that's a reason why we should allow people into America um, on a legal basis because they're passionate to come to America? Well, no, no, I said they were here for different reasons. They just happen to be passionate as, as, a, as an additional component. I mean, they come because they're fearing what's happening in their community. I've talked to, like I said earlier, when, when they tell you that every day their mom or their dad calls them and says they come here looking for you every morning and they want to know where you're at, Thank that's you. where they're moving in this direction. Thank you. I'm really glad this issue uh, in regards to Governor Abbott uh, moving people um, to various cities around the country has come up. Uh, have you been critical of Governor Abbott for what he's done? Absolutely, absolutely, because when, when you send someone that's not organized and, and they don't know who's on that bus and some of them are not sponsored, that's a huge burden on that community. Have you been critical of the Biden administration when they've flown people all over the country in the dark of night? I, I don't know of that taking place, I apologize. So you, you have not seen, for example, I have an uh, article here entitled, Biden administration quietly flies illegal immigrants to New York in middle of night. And we just heard um, from a fellow member on this panel saying they're doing it in Philadelphia also. Um, do you think that's right for the Biden administration to, to do that? Well, I think it's an indication of, of that they have to decompress because uh, when we get flights that are going out, it's to decompress the system there with the Border Patrol and has nothing to do with their community. So did you give the um, benefit of the doubt to Governor Abbott and say, well, maybe they're decompressing these people um, on their trips to these cities? Well, I I mean, can, isn't it the same thing, Judge Samaniego? No, no, it isn't because it's not coordinated. Uh, we've never gotten a call from the, the from the governor to tell us, hey, what do we, what do you need? How can we help? How can we do things? No, th and, and we just get buses. I to really leave. appreciate that. Biden administration quietly flies illegal immigrants to New York in the middle of the night. That's what they're doing. I will be happy to share this article with you so um, you can see what's happening there. Thank you for your answer. Uh, Sheriff Daniels, I was in your county in June of 2020. Um, what's changed since June of 2020? Well, we went from, just to put it in pers uh, perspective, around 5% of my jail population was border related up to almost 45% now, 45%. Uh, we've seen the pursuits. Last year, we put 180 people in jail for pursuits that were deadly pursuits. When I say deadly, driving at 100 miles an hour plus, endangering communities. Some resulted in deaths. Some we interdicted before they killed somebody. Uh, we see the, the flow of uh, public safety challenges in our community based on this border every day. So it's changed dra drastically as a result of this border. Because what I heard from you sheriffs is that there was good coordination all the way from the local level, all the way up to the federal government, June of 2020 and that there was some control being, the border was becoming more secure. Um, is that generally an accurate statement? Yes, Congressman. In fact, Border Patrol, when I pull up to the scene to help my deputies, the troopers, officers, or agents, they always make a point to come over and say, Sheriff, thank you for what you do. Thanks for being a voice for us. Um, we heard earlier that, um, I, I can't remember who it was that said that um, uh, the, f the f increased fentanyl is not tied to, il to illegal border crossings. Do you agree with that statement? No. And why not? Uh, the criminal cartels are exploiting our border, whether they're uh, trafficking children, adults, males, females, whether they're human smuggling for profit, or they're doing illicit drugs. Either way, the criminal cartels are exploiting our border, and I keep hearing the word, uh, different words about how it's controlled. It's not effectively managed right now. And until it is, the cartels are the, they're, they're the winners of this. Those of you on the other side of the aisle, you can continue to wear blinders or you can do photo op trips like the president did down to El Paso where they clean up uh, that region before he comes in. You can do that. But the American people are seeing very clearly what's going on. And now that we're in the majority, we're going to try to identify this as much as possible because you're hearing the truth here from people like the sheriff from the fentanyl families. And I hope you're meeting with those fentanyl families because it directly tried, tied to the border. I wanna just close with this. I hope as we go through this process, we also 
get more information out in regards to the NGOs, the International Organization for Migration, which has weaponized immigration into this country, all the way from Panama up to the southern border. I hope we dig in deep to those NGOs that are complicit Time in the greatest expired. human trafficking operation in, perhaps in the history of the world. I yield back. I recognize, Chair recognizes a uh, gentlelady from Pennsylvania. Is that right, Ms. Dean? Yes. Okay, Ms. Thank Dean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 